Alrighty, howdy folks. So let's look at uh, section two of chapter 15 and it's uh, double integrals over general regions. Last time we looked at rectangular regions only, double integrals over rectangular regions that is. But this time we are going to look at general regions, okay? Um, what's the idea here? as opposed to rectangles, right? So we have to integrate f of x, y over a certain domain and uh, with respect to dA, with respect to some area where d is some general region. And um, there are two kinds of ways of looking at this when it comes to general regions. One is let's say that we have a type one kind of uh, general region. Now notice this is not a rectangle, but at the same time, uh, there is something that's interesting about it that is sort of rectangle-ish in the sense that the limits on X are crystal clearly established between two constant values, X equals A to X equals B right? Our region is marked by those constants along the x direction, clearly. However, it's the y limits that seem to be different from the rectangular region. That is, we go from some curve g1 of x to another curve g2 of x. Does the order matter? Uh, the bottom one is g1 of x and the top is g2 of x. In a way, you have to watch out for that because uh, you want the height of the rectangle to be positive. Or in other words, just as maybe, yeah, meh, this is slightly better way of saying it. Notice when we look at this interval, we do not say it's b to a. Instead, we say a to b. That means a smaller value of x to a larger value of b. In a similar way, we, we should say a smaller value, quote unquote, smaller value of y to a larger value of y. Would you agree that every point on this curve has a smaller y value than every point, uh, the corresponding point on, on this one? Uh, on y equals g2 of x, that's the idea. So that's got to be the situation. So type 1, we could have a general region like this. Uh, or here is another possibility. However, notice something common between these two. That is, so far as x limits are concerned, it is still definitely from a constant x equals a to a constant x equals b. The only thing is, the y limits are different. Y is, y is from one curve g1 of x to another curve g2 of x. Okay, uh, is there another possibility? Okay, there's a third possibility for type 1 curves. That is, once again, commonality is x equals a to x equals b. And the curves go from g1 of x to g2 of x. So you should keep in mind these these three situations. So you should be able to identify, ah, am I dealing with a type 1 situation? Or, as we learn, there's something called type 2 situation. And how, how do we classify type 1 region? Uh, we'll say, oh, that's a set of points x, y, such that x lies between a and b, and y lies between g1 of x and g2 of x. That's what we mean by a type 1 region. Okay, And in such cases, the way we deal with the integral, double integral f of x, y, d, a is this. We will say integral a to b, g1 of integral g1 of x to g2 of x f of x y dy dx the idea here being because the limits on y are going from one variable that is one curve one function of x to another function of x we must we must integrate with respect to y first and the limits obviously would be y equals g1 of x to y equals g2 of x. So go ahead and take care of that variable part of 
the limits of integration that is on with respect to y and then e integrate it from a to b with respect to x cool x equals a to x equals b now once you understand type 1 type 2 is exactly uh, the same uh, or very similar to this except you would be switching x's and y's notice we have constant limits on y, y equals c to y equals d. However, the curves x equals h1 of y to x equals h2 of y. That's what we have, right? Hmm. So here we, uh, we let's notice, should I say, oh, no, um, how should I put it? Okay, on the y limits, it's crystal clear that we'll say y equals c to y equals d, our integral, right, For, with respect to y. With respect to x, what should we say? Is it h2 of y to h1 of y or the other way around? What do you think? You understand my question? As we, as we go from x limits, x equals h1 of y should do h equal, x equals h2 of y, is that what we should say? Or the other way around, x equals h2 of y to h1 of y. Ah, well, the idea is the smaller value of x to the larger value of x. What? Smaller value of x to a larger value of x? Which one is the smaller value? Well, the one on the left has smaller x values. Would you agree? These h1 of y, these values have a smaller value of x. Whereas these, the ones on the right, they have larger values of x. So we go from smaller values of x, h1 of y, to larger values of x, h2 of y. Oh, uh, would we be wrong if we were to swap? Uh, yeah, you would be wrong and you would actually get a negative value for the integral. Okay, that's the idea. So as long as you're careful about that, these problems are fairly straightforward. And uh, uh, again, just like in the previous case, you know, the C may, be, uh, may not be a line like that, a line segment like that. It could be just a single point like this. However, we are still going from y equals c to y equals d and x equals h1 of y to x equals h2 of y. And the third uh, scenario in type 2 looks like this. Wait a minute. Why am I calling this as x equals h1 of y? Couldn't that be y equals uh, h1 of x? Do you understand my question? Why should, why should I force myself to call this as x equals h1 of y? Why couldn't I interpret this as y equals h1 of x? I cannot because it fails the vertical line test. This curve cannot be a function of x because for a function to be a function of x, it has to pass the vertical line test, which this one does not. Okay, that's the whole idea. All right. Um, oh, uh, what is, well, I, I sincerely hope you remember what that stupid vertical line test is. Uh, that simply says, if you draw a vertical line, it cuts the graph at at most one point. But as you can see, if I were to draw a vertical line here, it cuts this graph at more than one point. It cuts at two points. That's why we would say, oh, this, this function fails the vertical line test. Cool. All right. Next, um, how do we classify this? The region D is nothing but set of all points x, y, ordered pairs x, y. So, okay, let me start over again. D is a set of ordered pairs x, y such that y lies between c and d and x lies between h1 of y and h2 of y. Then we notice we must integrate with respect to x first because 
the x limits are the ones that are 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 a variable are guided by variables h1 of y and h2 of y some functions of y x limits are functions of y so go ahead and take care of them first and then plug in the constant limits c and d after you integrate with respect to y that's something that you need to keep in mind okay uh, we yeah I'll do I'll show you a few properties of double integrals and after that I'll show you quite a few examples okay okie dokie um, integral of a sum equals sum of the integrals yeah this is the same as what you learned in Cal 1 right integral of a sum is equal to sum of the integrals 2 uh, a constant multiple can be pulled outside of the integral Okay, third, um, the integral of f of xy is bigger than or equal to integral of g of xy if it is the case that f of xy is greater than or equal to g of xy for all xy in the domain. So it must so happen that every f of xy is bigger than or equal to g of xy for the, for for each um, x and y each point x y in the domain cool um, that also seems to be fairly logical and uh, intuitively obvious so let's move on uh, what's this hmm integral over a certain domain d is the same as integral over a certain domain d1 plus integral over some other domain d2 where d is nothing but the union of d1 and d2 have we seen anything similar in uh, regular integrals yeah when we say integral a to c is the same as integral a to b plus integral b to c it's sort of similar to that because there we are saying hey this interval a to c is nothing but union of interval a to b and b to c for instance hey you want to integrate from 0 to 2 well you can integrate that from 0 to 1 and 1 to 2 because obviously 0 to 2 is a union of 0 to 1 and 1 to 2 similar concept here all right i think these are fairly straightforward and intuitively obvious so i'm not going to spend way too much time so let's get on with the problems zero to two integral zero to two integral zero to y square x square y dx dy this seems like a fairly straightforward thing where we don't have to do a whole lot of thinking uh, should we integrate with respect to x first and then y first or what well they have already given everything right the very fact that they have given the integral to be this way means we need to integrate with respect to x first and the limits of integration on x are x equals 0 to x equals y square that actually makes sense because like we said hey you have to integrate with respect to those if the limits are some functions then you better integrate with respect to those functions that variable that uh, that is given as a function right here x equals 0 to x equals y square and we have to do it this way cool then uh, i thought let's get an idea of what do they mean by integral 0 to 2 integral 0 to y square well notice the outside is the limits on the outside what do i mean by that 0 to 2 are the limits on the outer integral and the outer variable that we are integrating with is y right so you have to associate the outer integral outer limits of the integral uh, limits of the outer integral with the outer variable here so we have y equals 0 to y equals 2 now what would physically that look like that means y equals 0 is this x-axis and y equals 2 is this horizontal line so we are integrating from a constant value of y equals 0 to a constant value of y equals 2 all right however x limits are x equals 0 to x equals y square what is x equal to 0 
Oh, that's the y-axis. So this line. What is x equals y square? Uh, x equals y square is a parabola. Okay, here I drew only half the parabola because that's all. That's what we want. So x equals y square is actually something that extends this way. We are not interested in the bottom part because we are interested only in the interval of y equals 0 to y equals 2, which is the constraint placed by the outside integral. So we have this purple region that we need to integrate over. Now, does that look like our type 1 or type 2? Well, that actually looks like type 2 because we have limits on y that are constant, y equals 0 to y equals 2, and the limits on x are the ones that have a function, x equals 0 to x equals y square. Okay, so uh, if that part is clear, let's do the simple stuff. Uh, the integral is fairly straightforward. Integral 0 to x equals y square, x square y dx dy. I don't know why I repeated that. Uh, probably I meant to put a, I meant to put a square bracket here. Or I probably did have that once. Ah. <sighs> Control X. Let's see. Does that look better? Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so um, now we will evaluate the inside integral first. And so x square y with respect to x apparently. So that means treat y as a constant. And so integral of x square is just x cube over 3. So we have x cube over 3 times y as the integral of this, right? x cube y over 3. Um, and we integrate from x equals 0 to x equals y square. And uh, that just means we need to plug and chug plug y square for x, this becomes y to y square cube is y to the 6, not y to the 8, okay, y square, the quantity raised to 3. So a to the m, the quantity raised to n is a to the m times n. So x cube, uh, y square cube becomes y to the 6 times y is y to the 7. So y to the 7 over 3. And when you plug in x equal to 0, this goes to 0. So we end up with integral 0 to 2 of y to the 7 over 3 dy. Ah, that's a simple straightforward integral. And plug and chug, you got the answer. Cool? Mm, simple? I think so. Cool. Let's look at the next one. Uh, evaluate the iterated integral. Um, and 0 to pi has 0 to x. The variable thing is what you always have to integrate with respect to first. The limits have a variable, take care of that first. And sure enough, the way they have given it is clear. The limits on the outside one are x equals 0 to x equals pi half because the outside differential is dx. And the inside one, the differential is dy, so these limits are y equals 0 to y equals x. Just to give you an idea of what this looks like, I drew the picture. Would you agree uh, we have the correct limits in this picture? Um, x equals 0 to x equals pi half. x equals 0, x equals pi half. So there we go. And y equals 0 is the x-axis to y equals x. That's that straight line, 45 degree line. So that's y equals x. And we have to integrate, that means, over this interval. This is our domain. Cool. In this case, uh, because they said dy, uh, we first integrate with respect to y. And so, integral of sine y is negative cosine y, 
And so that's why we have negative x cosine y, rather x times negative cosine y, which I wrote as negative x cosine y, okay? And uh, uh, plug the limits, y equals zero to y equals x. And so that means wherever you see, to me that is, yeah, this way of writing gives so much more clarity, y equals zero to y equals x, instead of saying zero to x, if you do, uh, you may be a bit confused. Uh, am I plugging the limits zero for X or for Y? Well, uh, this way when you write, things are crystal clear. Because we integrated with respect to Y, we are using limits Y equals zero to Y equals X, right? Okay, and so you just plug negative X cosine X minus negative X cosine zero. Oh negative x cosine 0 is 1. So minus negative x becomes plus x. And then this, hmm, this thing is integration by parts. So I probably didn't bother to show you how to integrate this by parts and assume that you know how to do that, right? u equals uh, um, x and dv equals cosine x dx. Um, I late. Yeah, trigonometric first. So dv equals cosine x dx, u equals negative x, and you integrate like that. Um, negative x, and so you get this. And that's uh, just a matter of plugging in limits. Sine of pi half is one, cosine of pi half is zero, sine zero is zero, cosine zero is one. Are you with me on that? Okay, just uh, some of those trig values, and so we end up getting the integral to be 1 plus pi square over 8 minus pi halves. Cool? All right. Next. Uh, evaluate the double integral y equals this uh, 0 to, huh? Okay. So with respect to, well, we are given dA. So that means we need to decide the order in which we are going to integrate this stuff. Should we call this as dx dy or dy dx? It depends on which we are going to integrate with respect to first. Take a look at this and tell me what should we integrate with respect to first? Looking at the limits, x limits are going from 0 to 2. Are they constants or limits? Are they constants or there's the, are they function of something? No, they are just constants. Hmm. What about the limits on y? Oh, there's a function here, right? Y is equal to some function of x. Because of that, we must integrate with respect to y first. And that tells us that we should think of this dA as dy dx. And that's precisely what I did here. And once we decide that, then the constant limits x equals zero to x equals two, and the variable, eh, the bottom one is constant, the y equals zero to the variable limit y equals x. Okay, um, why, uh, how do we integrate this with respect to y? You can think of x squared as being a constant, okay? As long as you are integrating with respect to y, think as a partial integration, and so think of x squared as being just a constant. So my proposal is mm, substitution. u equals square root of x squared minus y square. u square is equal to x squared minus y square. 2u du equals negative 2y dy. And so u du equals y dy, negative y dy, and blah, blah. So you do that and uh, and integrate. You can verify this for me, okay? Or maybe for yourselves. So it turns out to be negative one third x squared minus y squared to the three halves. So let's plug in the limits, y equals zero and y equals x, rather y equals x first minus y equals zero next. And when we do, the whole thing just simplifies to one third x cubed dx. And if we integrate that, we get x to the four over 12 and we apply the limits of integration zero to two on x and we end up getting 
2 to the 4 is 16. 16 over 12 is 4 thirds. I'm thinking this is fairly straightforward. What do you say? All right. Uh, huh, this is an interesting one. Express D as a region of type 1 and also as a region of type 2. Then evaluate the double integral in two ways, in both ways. Right? The whole purpose of this is to show you that uh, it, in a way, as long as you're being careful, it doesn't matter which way you, you do this. Okay, that's what it's trying to say. And not all problems allow you to do it this way. This, uh, I thought I'll first go ahead and show you a picture of this. So that now notice, uh, y equals 3x and y equals x squared. Those graphs, those curves look like this. Could we integrate with, res with respect to x first and then y? And could we swap y first and x later? Okay, that means if we are doing with respect to uh, type, okay, the type 1 region. Okay, what, what's with the type 1 region? Type 1 region, you have to have the limits of integration to be y equals some h1 of x to y equals h2 of x. Maybe that's a better way of explaining. I'm sorry. Type 1 means the limits of integration are going to be constants along the x, x equals a to x equals b, whereas the limits on y would be y equals h1 of x to y equals h2 of x. Which one is h1 of x? The one at the bottom, the smaller y values. Clearly, this curve, y equals x squared, is below y equals 3x, at least in this interval. So we need to take h1 of x to be the bottom one. So y equals x squared to y equals 3x is what we are going to do. All right. And so type 1 region, the limits x equals 0 to x equals 3, the constants, and we have integral x square, y equals x square to y equals 3x. And because we are integrating with respect to y first, I made sure that the inside differential is dy. Right? Once we are careful like that, we are pretty much in business. And so uh, integral of y is y square over 2. And so plug these limits. And that simplifies to 9x cubed over 2 minus x to the 5 over 2. One thing is, I beg of you, be sure to write things very clearly. Learn to write in, such, in a clear fashion, just like I am doing here. I took lots of pains to uh, write like this. Okay, type this crap up like so that it looks clear and you also should try to develop a habit of of expressing clearly and that's for your own benefit okay tomorrow uh, or you know maybe next semester two semesters later uh, or hmm how about this maybe 20 20 years later or something like that uh, you have children who are taking Calculus 3. You could pull your notes out where you have done everything clearly and show to your kids. Mm, what do you think about that? Uh, do I do that with my daughter? No, uh, Yeah, I have some uh, wonderful set of notes from my graduate classes uh, uh, that I, sh I showed her uh, for advanced math for engineers when she was taking it. Um, I showed her stuff. Yep. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, let's uh, let's get back. Mm, so this is a straightforward integral, right? Hmm, and, I'm not sure. Uh oh. So this is uh, this turns out to be two forty three over eight. By treating this as a type one region. Now treating as a, a type two region, the work is a bit cut out. Type 2 region is the limits on y are constants. 
Would you agree? Okay. What are the limits on y? Which constant limits? y equals clearly zero part. y equals zero to what? Look at that y value. That is nine. So we will go from y equals zero to y equals nine. That part is established. Now x limits. X must be some h1 of y to x equals h2 of y is what we need to do. x equals h1 of y. Which one has smaller x values for the same y value? Say you pick any y value here, let's say, and draw a horizontal line. Which curve has a smaller x value? Oh, the first one, that line. And that compared to this parabola, yeah, these line values have a smaller x value, right? For a, for a same y, x here is less than x there. Okay, but then we don't have x equals h1 of y. We have y equals some, um, I want to call it h. Let me pick another one. Uh, g, okay. y equals g1 of x to y equals g2 of x. How are we going to convert that to x equals h1 of y? A oh, piece of cake. x equals y over 3. Right? So our h1 of y is just y over 3. x equals y over 3. Uh, fine. But what's up with this? If y equals x square, can you solve for x? If x square is equal to y, can you say what x is? Don't say just square root of y. The truth is, x could be plus or minus square root of y. Are you clear about that? Okay, we have x square is equal to y. So x is actually, strictly speaking, plus or minus square root of y. So that raises the question, should we pick x equals plus square root of y or negative? Well, looking at this picture, is x taking on negative values in this interval? No, x values are clearly positive. Hmm, pay attention to one more thing. Square root of y is guaranteed to be positive. Whenever we are, our y is clearly positive, so square root of y is going to be a real number. Let me repeat that. y values are positive, so square root of y is going to be a real number. Why do I say that? Because square root of negative numbers would not be real numbers. Right? They, they would be complex. However, we don't have that situation here. Y values are positive. So square root of Y is guaranteed to be a positive real value. Cool. And X is going to be either positive square root of Y or negative square root of Y. But we want only positive values of X because of the situation that we have. X values are clearly in this interval positive. I don't know what you're talking about, man. Oh, wait a minute. Guess what? If this curve had been here, you know, that y equals x square curve had been onto the left-hand side, then you will have to call this curve as x equals negative square root of y. But because it's in the first quadrant, where x values are positive, we'll say x equals square root of y. Right. Be careful about little things like that. Okay, uh, so uh, as simple as x equals y thirds to x equals square root of y. And uh, I'm not going to bother with uh, showing you those obvious aspects of this integral. And lo and behold, when we do this, we get exactly the same answer, 243 over 8. Fascinating, right? Good. So let's move on to 
Uh, I think this is the last one. Set up iterated integrals for both orders of integration. Then evaluate the double integral using the easier order. Ooh, they are asking us to figure out the order. Okay, so what do we have? Uh, y equals x, y equals 4, x equals 0. All right, type 1. Type 1 means constants on x. Hmm. Uh, x equals constants on x, but we don't have a constant on x. Y seems to be equal to 4. Oh, but then there is no constant for y. Uh, how do we do this? Well, if we have x is equal to 0 and y equals x, isn't automatically y equal to 0? If you plug x equal to 0 into this equation. Likewise, when y is 4, according to this, isn't x automatically equal to 4 as well? So, if we draw this as a curves, so we have y equals x, x equals 0. What is x equal to 0? The y-axis, right? That guy. And y equals 4, that guy. That uh, horizontal line drawn at y equals 4. So we have, uh, we have the region x equals 0. That means this guy to um, x equals y is this y or y equals 0 to y equals 4 and this one. So the way we split this is we'll say as a type 1 region we need to look at limits on y. y equals x to y equals 4. Right? I wish I had Okay, the region that we are integrating over is, is this triangle, folks. Maybe I should have colored it. I didn't have the sense to do that. Come on, Sammy. The region that we are integrating here is this, guys, that triangle. Okay, so if we are doing limits on y, so that means if we set up a, a, a vertical rectangle here, that rectangle is going from this y equals x to the constant value y equals 4. Would you agree? If I set up, uh, if I set up uh, um, like this, the limits on y, y equals x is the bottom one to y equals 4. And x limits are going from x equals 0 to x equals 4 there. So that's what we do. On the other hand, that same interval, if we are looking at writing in terms of type 2, then we integrate with respect to x first. That means we have the limits x equals something to x equals something else. x is 0 here and x equals y here. Our rectangle is horizontal. Because we are integrating with the constant y equals 0 to y equals 4. And x values are going from here. The left-hand side would be 0. And the right-hand side is governed by y. So x equals 0 to x equals y. This is the idea. Type 1, integral looks like this. Type 2, the integral looks like this. So the question is, mm, which one should we do? Which way should we work this integral out? Which one seems to be easier? Uh, really? One is easier than the other? Uh, you bet. Take a look at this. Would you agree this is much easier to integrate with respect to x first? Because all we have is this y square is a constant e to the some constant x, e to the ax e to the ax, the integral is 1 over a e to the ax, right? 
So integral e to the xy is 1 over y e to the xy. That is so much easier to integrate. On the other hand, if we needed to integrate with respect to y, oh boy, uh, we'll have to do integration by parts twice to y square e to the ay dy. Think of it as x is a constant, so y square e to the ay dy. Boy, uh, integration by parts twice, which is a big pain. Not such a big pain, but slightly, but relatively bigger pain. Would you agree? So that's why we want to integrate with respect to x first. So we actually want to treat this as region type 2, type 2 region and integrate. And so that's exactly what I did. And plug, plug, um, this is done. y e to the y square. Oh, how do you integrate y e to the y square? Substitution, u equals y square, du equals 2y dy, blah, blah, like that, right? Use a u substitution to figure this integral out. And then when you plug the numbers, this is what you get the integral to be. I think I may have one more problem. Uh, cool. Oh, nope, I don't. Hey, uh, we're done. Alrighty, thank you guys.